Alright slash x slash I have a story for you, so sit a while and listen. This takes place three summers ago during a boar hunting trip, down in a very rural area of the Ozark South. My main reason for sharing this here is that, ultimately, I don't believe in the paranormal. However, I believe I may have run across something that I couldn't explain and I want some input. Fair warning, I'm no good at green text. However, I'm not going to assault you with a wall of text. In any case, enough pretense aside. I'm back from college and wanting to get out into the woods. Be bored as fuck on a Friday night, and decide to head out super early for boar hunting with a buddy of mine, JD. JD is an Eagle Scout, not prone to being spooked very easily, and I have been hunting in places ranging from deep south swamps to Alaska. We pack our shit up, and leave his place around 12.30 a.m. After stopping for energy drinks and beef jerky, every hunter's best friend, we end up getting out there at around 2.15 a.m. We'd hunted this area for boar many times in the daylight, seen tons of deer, squirrels, and even a baby fawn that fell asleep by the warmth of our car engine once. Basically, a nice place. We pull in off the gravel tract, 40 miles from town and 3 miles from a podunk gas station slash deer check station. Decide not to fuck about in the woods at night, we'd had a mountain lion walk eye in our tracks on a previous hunting trip. Roll down the windows and try to take a short nap. Instantly we're hit with this nasty, cloying, sickly sweet odor. I just brush it off going, just some wet deer, huh, should mean our scent won't travel far in heavy damp air. JD just looks at me and says, that smells like death, bro, like a cow that's been out in the sun too long. I launch into a diatribe about him being a gigantic pussy and how he should deal with it. In any case, since we don't want either to be mucking about in woods home to mountain lions in the dead of night, or be accused of night hunting by some faggot ranger, we decide to go check and see if the podunk gas station is open. Surprise. JD's shitty old four-banger won't start. Fine, looks like it's a nap followed by hunting while we wait for some toothless mechanic to come jumpstart his car. All the while, this smell just seems to be seeping in through the vents and the cracks in the windows. It gets to the point where I'm actively retching in the car. Enough's enough, and we decide that if something had gone and died we'd prefer not to be stuck in a gigantic tin can right beside the corpse. We get out of the car, parked in the middle of this gravel parking area surrounded by tall grass on the north side, and woods on all the others. A swamp was to our direct west, full of boar, deer, and critters. As I'm sitting there loading up the magazine to my rifle, JD just keeps scanning the tree lean with his eyes. To the Europores and Northerners, hunting in swamps is close quarters, we hunt boar with semi-automatic rifles in the south, you want a quick follow-up shot in case the 400 pounds ball of muscle with 8-inch tusks decides to charge you from 25 to 30 yards out. Something's got his hackles all up, but I'm feeling fine so I just dismiss it as faggotry. Anyway, suited up, we make our way down to the small footpath, 1 to 2 feet wide, that winds its way down into the swamp. However, reaching the tree lean, we just both stopped, staring into the woods for a few minutes before either of us spoke. It was almost like shining a flashlight down a mineshaft, where the darkness sort of dissipated the light. I could feel my skin crawl, and something deep in the hindmost parts of my mind told me just to walk right back to the center of the clearing and wait for light. Nope. So, we do what any caveman would have done in that situation. We grunted out a few excuses to preserve our manhood, and went and sat the fuck down by his car. Like fuck I'm going to bumble through woods with mountain lion, weed growers, and God knows what else at 3.15, by that point, in the goddamn morning. The mood lightened, and the smell had seemed to recede a bit, so we just busied ourselves checking our rifles and talking about girls, politics, and history, we're a weird bunch. After a while the smell started coming back, and we began to voice our concern that something that smelled fucking dead was moving around. As the smell starts growing more and more oppressive I start hearing branches and twigs break in the undergrowth. Whatever it is, it's moving. 
I don't like that one bit. At this point, I'm thinking it's a mountain lion that's all covered in gore from a recent kill that's about to go full territorial mode. That wouldn't have been out of the question. But it wasn't. As I strained to hear where it was, I noticed that the snapping didn't come from the pat 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 of a four-legged animal. It resembled the crunch 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 of a novice hunter picking his way through the undergrowth. My first thought was we either had a ranger with a sick sense of humor, a drug grower with a great sense of humor, or worse, a motherfucking serial killer. Either way, weapons were shouldered, bolts closed on loaded chambers, and lights pointed towards where the sound was. Nothing. It's fucking nothing. Just the smell. And a, slower now, crunch crunch. And it stops. The smell is everywhere now, and whoever it is, is sitting far enough back in the tree lean not to be silhouetted by our lights. Smart asshole. No eye shine either, which ruled out just about any animal other than boar, which make enough noise to be easily noticeable. One again, the caveman brain rears up deep within my psyche and tells me, fire. A fire you idiot, build a fire. So, what do we do? JD and I build a fucking fire. Throughout this whole affair, other than a few moments we've been mostly quiet. However, the fire gives us comfort. And whatever it is seems to back off into the forest, if only for a while. As the fire burns hot, we start joking again, having a decent time. Convincing ourselves it was only a cougar. However, there's only so much timber in a gravel clearing and after a while we'd have to venture out of the firelight to keep the fire going. That time came, and as the fire burned down to embers, the smell came back more oppressive than before. And with that smell, comes an almost oppressive feeling of fear. Not regular fear, but an intense guttural fear that made your muscles tense, your stomach turn, and your eyes go wide. Every fiber of our being told us to get more wood, to keep the fire high, only with fire would we survive the night. So we cautiously walked to the closest tree lean, barely able to see from the dying light of the fire, we'd been trying to save our flashlights. I was on guard duty, as we figured that my Setme, .308 semi-automatic, would be a better standoff weapon than JD's small carbine. I'm tacticaling the fuck out at this point, adrenaline flowing from a profound feeling that something just isn't right. JD leans down into the undergrowth to pick up a stick, reaching into the tree lean. He screams and falls backwards, while branches break right in front of him. He gets up, freaking out, dusting himself off. Saying he saw something, staring at him first. Sunken eyes, a thick brow ridge, ashy gray skin. Then, it smiled at him. Not so much as smiled, but curled back its lips in a Cheshire grin. We are at NopeCon 1, gentlemen. I'm going to ignore the next hour of this hopscotch game of the fire dying, the smell growing more intense, him, as we call it now, drawing nearer, building the fire back up, and him retreating back to stay away from the firelight. However, it should be noted that this entire time, he was circling us. Probing our defenses, seeing if it could find a way to get up close without being seen, by the time 5 a.m. rolled around, we'd exhausted almost all of the dry firewood that wasn't within the tree lean, except for the tall grass on the northeast side of the road. We of course, do what we have to do, and slowly pick our way over to the tall grass. By this point I have taped a flashlight to my rifle, and switch it on as we leave the fire to get some dry grass. As JD is filling his hands with tinder, I check my right hand side, and look down the road. I wish I hadn't. Just as I swing my flashlight over the road, I see him for the first time. It's grayish black, with either sloughing skin or matted gray fur, I honestly couldn't tell. It crossed the ten yard wide track what seemed like instantly. Hunched over, maybe 5.5 to 6 feet tall, moving like a gorilla does. It's over. Something in my head just starts screaming, it's over. It knows you've seen it. It's not just being territorial. It's circling like a predator. It is a predator. 
that feeling hadn't been one of fear, but of impending predation. Somehow, the lower parts of our subconscious had known what was going on long before we did. In any case, we ran back to the fire, popped the dry grass on top and waited for the smell to recede. It didn't, it was close, very close, and this time it wasn't moving. So we pushed out, and got in the trunk of JD's car, and listened as it passed behind the front of his car back into the trees. In a burst of brilliance, I decide that we either make the three-mile run through dark countryside to the gas station and pray the lights are on. Or, we build a fire big enough that one of the farmers or someone driving the main road can see it. We end up deciding that sprinting three miles through dark countryside, guns on our backs, could at the worst get us devoured by him or shot by a terrified farmer. So, we do the next best thing. I pull a fucking small tree out of the ground. I'm not talking about a bush, I'm talking a small 8 to 9 foot tree. It's amazing what adrenaline can do for you, so much adrenaline where your facial muscles are drawn tight, and your eyes dilate to being nearly black, JD's description of my face. In any case, the fire burns bright, very bright, after a while and, heat retreats further into the woods. This fucking tree burned a long ass time. Eventually, maybe 30 minutes after throwing the tree on the fire, three lifted trucks come barreling down the road and fly into the gravel parking area. The first truck had an obscene amount of those off-road lights on the bull bar and roof, which lit up the whole glade like the fucking sun. The smell almost goes away entirely, still there, but almost imperceptible. No one gets out of the first truck. A man wearing a National Guard t-shirt, and ACU pants hops out of the second truck with his hand on his hip, concealed pistol. He questions us for about 10 minutes, makes us disarm, clear our chambers, and set our rifles in JD's car. He tells us there's a burn ban, we shouldn't be out here fucking around, etc, etc. We explain our car died when we came out hunting, and made that as a signal fire. He just looks at us strangely at the word hunting. Walks back to truck number one, comes back, tells us not to come back there unless we have all of our ducks in a row. Truck three drives over and a man hops out to jumpstart our car. I shake his hand and thank him profusely, and he gives me a worried, but sympathetic look. He doesn't say much, but walks back to his truck and drives away. Truck two drives away shortly thereafter. One we've got all of our shit packed up, Truck 1's window rolls down and a rather fat man in a polo calls me and JD over. There's no boar here, boys. If you're hunting for boar you best be looking further on down the road. At least on the other end of, county redacted. Bullshit, tons of boar in there. But I don't say that. I'm not going to mouth off to the hillbilly militia that just saved my life. So I thank him for his advice. JD and I get back in his car, debating whether he had gone away with all the commotion. Just as soon as Fatty McClightbar had pulled out, the smell returned yet again. Nope. We're out. Hop on the gravel road, drive to the highway, drive past a few farms, and make our way towards the western border of County Redacted. We notice we're being followed by a small white Honda. Guess who's sitting in the front seats? Fatty McClightbar and Hillbilly Militiamen. They follow us all the way out of that county, then turn around. So ends my experience. It's hard to get green text to express emotion, the exact description of the smell, or the fucking primal fear we felt. I wrote an after-action report of sorts the morning after that hunt, but haven't been able to find it after I moved, hence the green text. In any case, I've debated going back with more than two people to hunt him, but I'd like to know what exactly I was dealing with. This is of course, not touching the fact that the hillbilly militia patrol seemed to know more than they were letting on. Ideas, Sfiles? I'd like to start off by saying that I don't have a fucking clue why I'm posting this on slash x slash or, really, at all. Maybe I'm afraid of dying, or something. 
The events described in this story happened a month and a half ago, in Shannondale, West Virginia, although I typed this up about two weeks ago. I just haven't really had the guts to post this until what happened yesterday. The story starts in late September, when my family went to go visit our relatives, who invited us up to celebrate one of them, Desiree, getting like 2,000 bucks in some scratch-off lottery thing. They live in this really fucking shitty part of Shannondale that people from Charlestown, Shepherdstown and Ransom, basically the least rednecky parts of WV, like to call, Squalor Holler. It's way up on the mountain, and exactly like how everyone pictures it when they hear about it, nothing but ramshackle shacks, rusty ass rebuilt trailers, everything fucking covered in decades old Christmas decorations because they're all too busy being smelly rednecks to ever clean up. Real deliverance shit, just no rivers or canoes. The relatives we were visiting are absolutely confirmed in breeders, all cousins fucking each other. We don't refer to them as aunt, uncle, whatever, just relatives. Not terrible people or anything, just absolutely cartoonish, depressing hillbilly. So anyway, we're up here in this godforsaken trailer, it sucks. There's like eight of them, plus me, my dad, my mom, and my sister. About two hours in, my mom takes my cell phone so that I can focus on the family time together, which is bullshit. All we did the whole time was eat TV dinners and be forced to watch NASCAR and shit. After like six hours of this shit, about ten minutes before we're supposed to leave, it starts raining. We know how treacherous the roads can get up on the mountain, so we decide to wait for the rain to die down. Flash forward two hours later, it's fucking dark as hell, ten o'clock, and there's a flood warning for the area. I have my phone back by this time, no reception, though, of course, I'm playing Tetris and Texas Hold'em and stuff, when suddenly I hear my dad start losing his shit in the next room. I walk over, and it turns out that they let slip that they buried their kid. Thomas, outside, and apparently were afraid the rain would wash up his body or some other horseshit. The kid was like six, he was attacked by a dog, and they never told the cops. Just fucking buried him like he was a family pet. My dad's flipping his shit, and rightfully so, because, you know, we live in the 21st century in all. So our relatives all say they'll sort it all out in the morning. My parents tell me and my sister to stay in the same room as them during the night, and we do. None of us really suspected that they'd kill Thomas or anything, since they're really peaceful, they didn't even own any guns aside from this one old-timey double-barrel shotgun they had on a mantle. Nevertheless, we were creeped the fuck out, and intended to tell the cops in the morning once we got to town. So, it was like 3 in the morning, I couldn't sleep. Power had gone out for the fifth time or so, and I'm not able to charge my dead phone. Worst part is, I could see Thomas's little grave right outside the window. Little cross on it and everything, and I assumed the kid couldn't have been buried deep at all since they were so worried about him just washing up out of the grave. So I was just fixated on it, kept being drawn to looking out the window. And then I saw the fucking worst thing in my life. Something was creeping through the trees toward the house. I stared at it for a while, but couldn't get a good look at it since it was raining and the brush was so thick. For a few minutes I assumed it was two really pale horses, kind of ambling through the woods side by side. But then it walked into the moonlight, and I saw that it was all one thing, like a kind of human torso, but wider. It finally stepped into full view, and I saw it had something like six legs, kind of somewhere between a beetle's legs and a horse's legs. Two arms, right where someone would normally have them, but they were about a half a foot longer than any normal man's arms. It had a bald head, but the face looked like some sort of fucking bizarre masquerade ball kind of mask. This fucking clenched up, furrowed forehead, and a nose that looked sort of like a crow's or a raven's beak. It didn't have eyes, either, just like the depressions where eyes would go. It looked like it had a human mouth, underneath its proboscis. What still strikes me to this day is that it seemed to have a penis, too, like right on the abdomen where a normal person's dick would be. The thing moved sort of gracefully, and made these soft thumb-thumping noises when it moved. It must have been like seven, eight feet tall, 
but sounded like it weighed maybe only 150 pounds at most. It starts walking towards Thomas's grave, and then I finally snap out of whatever trance I was in, and just scream. My mom is the first to wake up, and I tell her to look out the window. She rushes over, and doesn't really seem to understand what she's looking at. After a minute, though, the thing bends down and starts pawing at the grave with its hands. My dad and Jasper rush in, and Jasper just fucking loses his shit. Screams like a little girl, runs back out of the room, yelling for his father, yelling, it's outside, it came and it's outside. I look back and see the thing is digging furiously at the ground, kicking up huge mounds of dirt. I hear these sounds of feet running around the house, I think they were looking for the shotgun. The thing reaches into the hole and grabs up what I assume was Thomas's body by the leg in one hand. The thing kind of gallops back into the woods, snapping all these branches and shit, and then that's when we all hear it. A kid crying. The sound of a child sobbing and crying, from the direction that the thing took off in. We left as soon as the rain let up, at like 5 a.m. I don't even think we told anyone at the house. Drove straight back to Ranson, only stopping for gas. No one said a word to each other. My family refuses to speak about what happened, I tried to bring it up once, just to make sure it was real. My dad told me to shut the fuck up, so I did. I typed this up about three weeks after it happened, but just saved it to a notepad file and left it alone. Never mentioned it to any of my friends or anything, just tried to erase it from my mind by getting absolutely fucked up drunk whenever my thoughts lingered on it. It mostly worked, up until yesterday. See, I work at this gas station in Ranson, from 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. I work the register, keep the place clean, and take out the trash. Yesterday, when I was bringing the trash bags over to the back of the building for the dude in the morning to take care of, I heard what I had assumed to be some junkie fucking around in the dumpster. I yelled at whoever it was a couple of times to get the hell out before I called the cops. But as I walked towards the source of the noise, I suddenly heard those same footsteps. That soft thump thump. Hooves or feet, or whatever the hell they were. I turned right around and went back into the store and hid behind the counter. I look over at the outside security monitor and see some kind of movement from just off screen, something huge casting a shadow and moving. Catch a glimpse of, I don't know, an elbow or something. A pale limb, darting in and out of view. It had to have been the same thing. I waited for it to leave, and after a while, it did. I woke up behind the counter at 6 a.m. this morning to my manager giving me this fucking look like I'm a drug addict or something. Went home, typed the rest of this up. And that's about it. Hey, stalker. Hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.